So I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen here, and we're going to write another program that might be, it's, it's the shell of a fun game that somebody might actually play. So far we've done a lot of examples of how it works and the logic behind it, but let's be honest, we haven't written anything that anybody is going to be super interested in you know, looking at. Not a lot of people want to see a program that counts to 10. I'm going to write the shell uh, or the beginning of a guess the number game. I want the user to guess a number 1 through 10, and then I want to be able to tell them are they too high, are they too low, or if they guessed it right. In order to write a program like this, the first thing I'm going to have to do is get a guess from the user. So I'm going to store their guess in a variable called guess, and I'm going to use an input statement to ask them to please guess a number between 1 and 10. I'm going to use my backslash n escape sequence, end it with a colon, and test this program out and see how it works. And it pops up. Size my window here. Python shell pops up. It says guess a number between 1 and 10. I'm going to go ahead and guess 7. And it didn't do anything, but over in the shell I'm going to look at guess as a variable, and I can see it's stored the string of 7. Yes, that, that's what we encountered a few lessons ago. We're going to have to convert that number to an integer so that we can compare it to other numbers. Now, there's a couple ways I could do this. I could first just set guess equal to the int of guess. If I were to do that, oops, if I were to do that, I can see guess equals the integer 7. That's exactly what I want. But I want to make my code a little bit more efficient. So the way I'm going to convert it to an integer, I'm going to get rid of this line that I just wrote right here. And I'm going to convert it in the same line as my input statement. I'm going to take the integer of the input statement, which will have the effect of running this code right here, having the user enter a number between 1 and 10, and then immediately converting that to an integer in one line of code. If this worked correctly, I'm guessing a number between 1 and 10. I'm guessing 7. In the shell, I'm going to test by uh, typing guess. The value of guess is 7, and it's an integer because it doesn't have the delimiters around it. So I've, I know I've got the number 7 there. Pretty good. I'm going to have a loop run, and I'm going to say while guess is not equal to 5. So the number I'm going to have the user shoot for is 5. While guess is not equal to 5, I'm going to say if x, or guess, is less than 5. So if the guess is less than 5, then we know they've guessed too low. So I'm going to print your guess is too low. And I'm going to get them to guess another number. I'm going to do that simply by taking the integer value of an input statement that says, please guess a number between 1 and 10. The same line of code I have to start my program off, I'm going to use right here. Now, there are more efficient ways to do this. We'll get to those. I'm going to need another if statement. If the guess is greater than 5, we know their guess is too high. That means it's a 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10, assuming that they're following our instructions and actually picking a number between 1 and 10. If their guess is too high, I want to let them know by printing out, your guess is too high, and then prompting them to guess another number. Please guess a number between 1 and 10. Now, if their guess isn't less than 5, and it's not greater than 5, then the only other possible thing that it could be is if the guess is equal to 5. And if the guess is equal to 5, then I'm going to print, you're correct. And that's the entirety of my program here. If guess equals 5, 
it's going to print that the user is correct. When it comes back to check the while statement again, it will say, is 5 not equal to 5? That will evaluate to false, and my program will be over. So let's see what I got. I'm going to execute this program right here. Please guess a number between 1 and 10. I'm going to guess 3. My guess is too low. Guess again. Hmm. If, if 3 is too low, I'm going to go ahead and guess 8. That number is too high. Guess again. Let's guess 4. That guess is too low. I'm going to guess 5. And you can see it prints here correct and breaks correctly. Now one thing that in a simple program like this you probably don't need, but it's a good habit to get into and it's something I should have done while I was writing the program. Uh, don't forget to put comments in your program. I'm going to add a comment here and say this executes if the guess is too low. This executes if the guess is too high and executes only if the player guesses 5. You probably don't need it in a program this simple. However, it's a habit that you want to get into, putting comments in your program to let everyone know what's going on. So we've got a bit of a, we've got a working guess the number program here. The last thing I want to look at, though, is how important the order in which your if statements occur can be. I'm going to simply take this block of code right here, the correct guess, and I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to paste it as the first check. So the only thing I've done, I haven't changed a single line of code the way a line of code is written. All I did was change the order. Let's run this program again and see what happens. I'm going to guess 3 again, and my guess is too low. Perfect. I'm going to guess 8. Guess is too high. So far, everything looks to be executing the same, but watch what happens when I guess 5. The program immediately exits, and this is something that can really bug you as a programmer, trying to figure out why is this. I look at this code right here, and I say, if guess equals 5, print, you're correct. But when I ran my program, I guessed 5, and it didn't print that I'm correct, it just ended. That can drive you nuts as a programmer. So let's follow the logic. I'm, I'm going to take this code, I'm going to move it over to uh, Paint so I can do some notation on it, and show you what happened to our your correct message. Alright, let me move our code over here, um, just so we can trace what's happening in our program line by line. Uh, in a couple lessons, I'll show you an online tool that can kind of do this. But I think one of the best debugging things you can do when you can't figure out what it, what's causing an error, and some of you might have figured it out already why this program didn't print your correct, even though the user clearly was correct. Uh, one thing that helps is to go through and trace your program line by line. In simpler programs, I, I often do this with just a sheet of paper next to my desk, and I try and trace exactly what is going on. So let's take a look. The first line that executes is this statement here. We're setting guess equal to the integer value of an input statement, guess a number between 1 and 10. So we are getting a variable guess, and I think the first uh, guess the user entered was 3. So guess is going to be equal to the integer value of 3. It's going to move on to the next line of code. That is this while statement right over here. While guess is not equal to 5. Well, guess equals 3, and 3 is not equal to 5, so we're going to execute the, while, the block of code underneath the while statement. We're going to check this if statement. If guess equals 5. It doesn't, so we're going to skip the entire block of code and check the next statement. If guess is less than 5. Well, 3 is less than 5, this line of code will execute, and this print statement will then print. So our program did get print, your guess is too low. It's now going to prompt guess to change based on user input. The next time through, the user guessed 8, so this 3 was replaced with a value of 8. 
The program continues running and the next line just happens to be if guess is greater than 5. Well, guess is equal to 8 now. 8 is greater than 5, so we're going to print your guess is too high. That's what our program did as well. So we print this statement. We run set guess equal to another input statement and the user guessed 4 next. So this 8 gets replaced by a 4. And we're going to change the color of our ink to show the second run through the program because what happens is it hits the end. It goes back up to the while statement to check again. Is 4 not equal to 5? This statement right here evaluates to true. 4 is not equal to 5. And it will run this line of code here. If guess is equal to 5. 4 is not equal to 5. So we skip that block of code. If guess is less than 5. Well, 4 is less than 5. So we're going to print your guess is too low. Prompt the user to guess again. They guess a 5. So we erase the 4. Replace guess with a value of 5. Guess is now equal to 5. We run this third if statement because that's the next line. Is 5 greater than 5? That evaluates to false. We get to the end of the while statement. That prompts us to check again. Only now, guess is equal to 5. This while statement evaluates to false. Because it evaluates to false, the entire block of code is ignored, and the program heads to the bottom. There's no more lines of code, and the program ends. So while the user did guess 5, and they correctly guessed 5, the while statement, because of the way the program executes, it never got a chance to run your correct. In fact, this program would never be able to print your correct because at the moment guess is not equal to 5. If this evaluates to true right here, the next line of code is never executed. If this evaluates to false, well, this if statement by default has to be false as well. Or excuse me, if this while statement evaluates to true, 5 is not equal to 5, the next line has to be false. Guess cannot equal 5 if the previous line just showed that it wasn't equal to 5. So that's what happened in this program right here. That's why you're correct never printed in that weird, uh, that second version of the program. That's the kind of thought process that you need to go through. Now this is a long drawn out version of that thought process. Uh, most of you will get to the point where you can do this without thinking too much about it. You could probably do that in two or three seconds, but that's the logic behind what's going on in this program. Let's just contrast that real quick with the original code. That's what I've uh, cleared the screen and replaced it with, the original line of code that worked correctly. If we trace that through the exact same way, we also get you know, the first line of code executes. Whoops, I want a pencil here. The first line of code executes. And guess, uh, the first guess was 3. So guess equals 3. Guess is not equal to 5. So it checks first. After checking this while statement, it says, is guess less than 5? It is. It prints your guess is too low and prompts the user to guess again. They guessed 8. It moved to the next check. If guess is greater than 5, well, 8 is greater than 5, so it's going to print your guess is too high. Prompt the user to enter guess again. They entered 4. Execute this code right here. 4 is not equal to 5, so we skip that entire block. That brings us to the end, and we check this while statement again. Well, 4 is not equal to 5, so we execute over here and we check is guess less than 5 in this case it is we print your guess is too low prompt the user to enter again this time they enter 5 that 4 is replaced by a 5 so so far the execution of the program very similar to the pro the one that had the bug that didn't print you're correct only now guess is equal to 5 well 5 is not greater than 5 it's going to skip down to this l next check in this case, guess is equal to 5, so it's going to print your correct, get to the end, come back up to the top, and check this while statement, which now evaluates the false, and the program 
ends. It's a very simple change. Just moving that guess to the bottom makes a huge bit of difference. If your programs are giving you weird errors or things that you can't quite understand, try and trace them through. Go line by line and figure out what's happening. The main difference you've got here is the check is being made after the user has re-entered any of their guesses. Because of that, the last check that's always made is, is the user correct? And if it is, it prints, you're correct. The previous version of the program, that was the very first check that was made, and when the user changed data later in the block, it was never realized because the check had already been made. All right, everybody, before we move on to the uh, Lesson 9 Challenge program, which I think is pretty interesting this week, uh, it's a for where we are, I think it's it's kind of a, a fun challenge program. I wanted to put this program up on the screen. I almost forgot about it when I went to go post this video, but I think it's important to look at this because it's the third variation of the number guessing game we've been looking at throughout this entire lesson. But to me, it's the most concise version. And um, if I was writing it, it's probably the version that I would like the best. And I almost forgot to mention it. Now, when you look at the code that's on the screen, uh, you'll notice there is no if statement to check if guess is equal to 5. Instead, we have a final line of the program that prints, you got it. When we execute this program, it says enter a number between 1 and 10. Let's pick 3. It says it's too low. I pick 8 too high, four, too low, five, and it prints, you got it. So it works very similar to the first version of the program, but what makes this one a little bit different is there is no actual check in the while statement. That's because logically, there doesn't have to be. As long as x is not equal to five, we know it's either gotta be too high or too low. If it's equal to five, this while loop won't execute at all. So it's gotta be either too high or too low. If guess is less than 5, we print too low and have the user guess again. If, get, if the guess is too high, we print too high and have the user guess again. And it will continue that loop indefinitely until the user guesses the correct number, which is 5. But as soon as guess equals 5, this while statement will evaluate to false. It will break the loop. It won't run any of the commands in the block underneath it, and it will immediately go to the next line of code that's in line with the while statement. In this case, it will print, you got it. But it will never print, you got it, unless this while statement breaks. And the only way for this statement to break is if the user is correct. This is probably the most concise version of this program that we're able to do at this point. As you're writing your programs, just remember there's hundreds of different ways that you can write your code. There's hundreds of different ways to make your program work. There is no right or wrong way. Write a program that makes sense to you, but know as you can, as you get to be a better programmer, as you look at your code, as you start to evaluate it, there's probably a more efficient and effective way to run your program. So um, we're going to move on to the challenge program for the week now, but I just wanted to show you that because I thought um, it's a good example of another way to do this program that eliminates some of the risk of having bugs because in this case right here, there's no way for the program not to print you got it simply because you have to get it correct to get to that line of code. Okay, so that should be enough to get you started with if statements. Um, I've got this week's challenge program up for you. Uh, the Week 9 Challenge program is kind of a game, but kind of not. Uh, let's run through and take a look at what this week's program is going to do. So we've got the main menu that shows up here, and it's asking me to make a selection. Uh, the selection I make is to, see, I want to pick up an object. So I'm going to select P from the menu, and it says, what would I like to pick up? Sword or our armor? I'm going to pick up the sword, press S, and it prints an appropriate message. You pick up the sword, it's well balanced, quite sharp. Make your selection. I'm now back at the main menu. This time through, I want to search the area. Uh, I have my choice of rocks or fallen tree. I'm going to pick fallen tree. It says a small gopher runs from the fallen tree when you kneel. 
make a selection. Uh, maybe this time I'll pick up the armor. The armor is a bit rusty. It offers good protection. And then I'm going to run away. And when I run away, the program ends. It's the basics of an adventure game. Now, it's not a very advanced program just yet. It really is a bunch of if statements and print statements put together. If you can recreate this program right here, you've got the concept of if statements down. Now, what this program doesn't do, uh, and you're welcome to try it if you want, it doesn't keep track of your selections. So I can pick up the sword every single time through. It wouldn't make a bit of difference. I could pick the armor up every time through. wouldn't make a bit of difference. And there's no way for me to use those items. So the program doesn't keep information about what I've already done. Uh, it's more just, can you make a menu and can you have the program react intelligently to what the user does? If they say they want to pick up a sword, you should have a message that relates to picking up a sword show up on the screen. Another thing that this program doesn't do is any sort of error checking. Um, if I pick something um, like a lowercase p, right now my program is set up for assuming the user has a caps lock. If they pick a lowercase p, program won't react. If they pick something that's not in the menu, program won't react. The program will only react to proper commands. And the runaway command, of course, uh, ends the program. So this is what you're going to be doing. I want you to write a program using if statements that prints a main menu that gives the user three options. The three options are up to you. Um, the three I used were pick up an object, search the area, and run away. The first two should offer some kind of secondary choice related to the first choice. If you select to have, if your first um, choice is having the user pick an object up, then the next menu should have a list of items that the user can pick up. The second menu for me was to search, and the next menu after search was selected had a list of areas that could be searched, and then the third command is what stopped the program from running, so when the user selected run away, the program stopped executing. Your challenge program is to recreate that. Create a menu that has at least three choices. One choice will end the program. The other two choices will give the user uh, a second choice related to their first choice that they can pick from, and the program will print out an appropriate message based around the user's selection. That's your challenge program for this week. Of course, if you have any questions, if you need anything from me, or if there's anything I can do to make things more understandable, I will certainly be available to help you out. Just leave your questions in the comments, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Good luck on this week's challenge program, and I look forward to you doing lesson number 10 which is about importing commands and create a, creating random numbers. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day.